The Norwegian doll was just 11 when she skated in her first Olympics in Chamonix in 1924 and finished last. But from then on, gold was all she would know, winning the Olympic titles in the next three games. Morley Safer has the story of Norway's greatest and perhaps shrewdest sporting hero. She was a whole girl surrounding a dimple. She was a true phenomenon and a very bright lady. She was Sonia Annie. And that was quite a lot to be. Ten world championships, three Olympic gold medals. At 24, Sonia Henney single-handedly changed figure skating from a boring series of exercises into a thrilling event. Half athletics, half showbiz. But there was another world to come. The latest news from the land of the stars. A new motion picture star, Sonia Haney, the Norwegian lass who is the world's greatest figure skater and winner of Olympics. Though by 1936, Sonia Haney was one of the most famous women in the world, here in the back lots of Hollywood, she was considered a mere oddity, not to be ranked with such goddesses as Garbo or Dietrich or the reigning queen herself, Shirley Temple. But the little Norwegian lass was determined to parlay whatever gifts she had into millions. And she did, by staring down the meanest mogul in town, Daryl F. Zanuck. Zanuck cranked out light, breezy movies for depression-weary audiences. When Sonia and her parents came to Hollywood for a charity skating event, the mobs who filled the place told Zanuck something. He really wanted her, whether her accent was as thick as salami, didn't matter to him. Ray Strait is the author of a tell-all biography of Sonia Henney. Fox had a history of making money with blondes, and you look and just go right through them. Harlow, Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield, Madonna, all blondes, and they all made money. And Sonia made money. A lot of money. She demanded $125,000 for her first film, almost twice what Zanuck offered, plus $7,000 a day to choreograph the skating. That was tough for a mogul to take. Thank you, Mr. Zanuck. I should do my best. She was sharp very sharp businesswoman. Milton Berle was also on the Fox payroll in those days. Yeah, she fought for money. Oh boy. She said, you want me? I'd be very, very, very happy to do it, but uh, give me the loot. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got it too. What are you doing snowing? You don't just cook. No, I don't escape. That first picture, One in a Million, was a huge hit and led to a series of movies light on plot, heavy on skates, and never far from a song. The public responded by making Sonia the second biggest movie attraction of 1938, right behind little Shirley Temple. She had a naive look on the screen. She opened her eyes and they'd do a close-up on her, and every mother thought, that's my little girl. One of the contract players who supported everyone's little girl was Cesar Romero. She gave this impression on the screen of being uh, innocent and virginal and all of that. Was she like that off the screen? No, she knew what she was doing. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was not innocent and virginal, believe me. <laughs> In fact, behind the bubbling innocence celebrated by Disney animators was one of the toughest negotiators in Hollywood. She had made so much money that uh, somebody said, do you like California? She said, yes, I may buy it. Beyond the movie, she raked in millions from a glitzy ice show, which played to packed houses across the country. She even owned and controlled the trinkets sold at the souvenir stands. By 1939, Sonia Henney was the highest paid woman in show business. They called her iron pants and iron skirt. She didn't care. In a world. Today, they would rate her with some of the tough women, like Madonna. She knew how to manufacture. She didn't care what the public thought. She manufactured who she was. What about the men in her life? She devoured them. I you say this now, so I don't get into trouble. She was uh, kind of a flirt. She liked men. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She liked men. She liked men. Thank goodness. 
One man in her life was Fred de Cordova, who directed her last film and years later became executive producer of The Johnny Carson Show. Her entrance into a room, there are certain people in the history, whether it was Ava Gardner, Lana Turner, or women of that beauty, uh, had an effect on the people already in the room, and Sonia was one of them. You could hear the buzz, there she is, isn't she attractive, and that isn't that Sonia, because she had a lot of money. She had more jewelry than I wore when I was in drag. As a matter of fact, you know, she had a, uh, a Picasso painting in her house, in the, in the, in the bar room, of, and uh, it was one of those awful looking things with four eyes and three noses, you know, one of those awful... And I said to her one day, I said, Sonia, I said, how can you stand looking at this thing every day? It's so ugly. She said, yes, but you know how what it's worth? Sonia Henney's oddball stardom lasted just over a decade. In 1948, her last film, The Countess of Monte Cristo, slid into oblivion. And the ice show crowds began to dwindle. But wherever she went, people would mob her, you know, and she'd say, and they'd say, they, I'm not box office, you know. But, but the novelty was over. The, the novelty was over, that's right. If that was true, Sonia Henney decided that in Norway anyway, no one would forget her. She built a museum in Oslo for her paintings and her trophies. In 1969, she died of leukemia, having saved almost every penny she ever made, about $50 million. Today in Hollywood, tourists pay tribute to other, more contemporary footprints in the celebrity cement. Few remember the little Norwegian lass who briefly lit up the screen, but who changed an Olympic event forever. From her ability, I believe that's what has made ice skating as popular at the Olympics.